Welcome back to the channel and what was meant to be day two of our trip to Carnarvon. But in reality what happened was, day two was meant to be a pretty relaxed day going up the track to Big Ben but not going the whole way and taking a few photos along the way and visiting some of the sites so that our hike from the next day would be a lot shorter. It was actually quite a brutal day, I think we did around 13 kilometers. So you're joining us here on day three of our trip where we were heading up the gorge to the Big Ben campsite and I've also included in this some of the footage that we took on the second day as well as some of the locations that we went and I'll also be including some photos from that day but for the amount of hiking we did it really was quite a brutal mission. So the hike that we'll actually be doing in this video will be our big hike out to the Big Ben campsite where we're going to be camping for one night and exploring some of the gorges around that area of Carnarvon which I've been told by Julian were some of the nicest gorges in the area. So I was pretty excited to actually see them for myself and hopefully capture some amazing photos of them. So look forward to seeing that towards the end of the video as well as our journey along the way and a few of the photos that we've taken. I really hope you guys enjoy this one and stay tuned. Day three, we didn't get much of a chance to take any video yesterday. It was a bit of a hectic day. I think we did in total about 12, 13 kilometers that day. Just going up and down and up and down hills. But I took plenty of good photos, so you probably saw those just before. With a little bit of walking B-roll I did manage to take as I was walking down the track. But today we're heading to our next campsite, deep into the Carnivan Gorge. We're going to be staying at the Big Bend campsite. And on the way, we decided we'd stop to take a few photos. And we came across these lovely blue gum trees. It rained quite a bit last night, so everything is really green and saturated at the moment. And these trees are just standing out in such a nice way. And they're nice and contrasted with these black burnt palm trees, which go, which go right up beside them. So I'll flip it around and show you what we're looking at. So we just have these blue trees just poking right through the grass. And I think it's going to make a fantastic pano, but at the moment I've got something else framed up. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to take these few blue trees and the black palm trees which come up beside them. And I've tried to compose that in a way where I'll be able to put it into a pano crop. And hopefully it'll look pretty nice because I think it's pretty well balanced with the blue shapes and the black lines. But I'll show you what I have actually on the camera at the moment. And hopefully you agree already. So this is what I have framed up here at the moment. So I'm thinking that I'm going to take this entire crop, but I might just put it in a bit narrow than the 16 by 9 that you're seeing right now, maybe even into a 1 by 2 just so you don't have any of that sky in there, but you do have the lines of the trees moving up through the frame. Because I think that would look just lovely if I just cut it off right there. I think that could look really nice. So now that you have an idea of what the photo is going to look like, there's nothing left to do but to actually hit that shutter button. So we're taking this one at 0.4 seconds for the exposure, f14, and ISO 100. Just really want to make sure that depth gets all those trees in focus. I'm not too sure at the moment, but it should be good either way, I think. So hit that shutter button. Just after taking that photo, I thought I might give it a try putting the long lens on the camera just to see what I could get with it because I thought maybe I'd be able to get a nice pano. But right after I put it on at 100 millimeters, it was actually the perfect focal length to get what I was going for with the wide angle lens. And I think this one actually works a lot better than the one that I had before. I might even try and shoot another pano on top of that just to get a little bit wider of a frame of view because I feel like it's a bit tight right now just in between the two sides of the trees. I need a little bit more breathing room in the composition, I think. So I'll show you what I have framed up on this one on the camera right now and you can see what you think. So this is what I have framed up here in the shot and there's just a little bit more space on the sides here and it's a little bit more compressed so I think it works a bit nicer with the composition. So 
we've been hiking for a few hours now, and landscape has just been getting better and better. I mean, it's looking fantastic here. You look around on all sides, and you're just in the middle of this huge gorge with these amazing stone walls just up every side. It's honestly such an amazing landscape to be out in. I'll throw some footage in right now of sort of what a 360 view of where I am is now and how nice it is, because it's fantastic. We're just a few hundred meters from where I did the last piece of video, and we've come across this tree which I was just photographing a little bit earlier, but at a different angle now. And I think it might work a little bit better, but whatever I do, it's gonna be handheld. And hopefully, it'll be nice. So settings-wise, I have no idea what it's gonna be. You know, whatever is best for hand-holding. But hopefully it turns out nice. I'll show you what I'm looking at here. It's just this little tree that's poking through right here. And the reason I like it so much is because compared to all the other palm trees around it, its tree trunk is completely black and its leaves almost have this yellowish, yellowish color, which I think will look really nice in a composition. So I'll put up whatever I get and hopefully it's good. getting better and better. We went a little bit further down the track. It feels like it's taking forever to get to our actual location though, like we're starving for some lunch, but it's getting amazing in this place. So the canyon walls have sort of closed in on us and it's just, yeah, it's like we're in a massive gorge, which we are. <laughs> uh, I'll put some footage in of the spot that we're at right now, but it's absolutely amazing. I mean, these gorge walls might be I'd say easily 200, 300 meters towering above us on either side, and there's only about 100 meters in between. It's absolutely amazing. So we just arrived at this little rocky area beside the creek and really like this spot because when you look across the creek you can see this cliff face with different colors of blue, yellow, white and purple all with the reflections of the water sort of reflecting back up onto them and creating this really unique pattern I'd say. I think it would make for a really nice abstract shot with just the rock face with those ripples of light just moving across it. I'm not too sure how it's going to come out in reality but I'm hoping that it could be pretty nice just as like a zoomed in abstract. So I've snapped a few shots of the rocks and it's not really, I would, I'd say it's not really working out in practice as I thought it would in theory, but chuck it on the edit, see what it looks like, but I'm not feeling super optimistic just because with the bright sun that we have at the moment, it's hard to actually get a proper exposure. The highlights are all blown out and the shadows just seem a bit too dark, but I'll throw up whatever I get anyway and hopefully it turns out good. Just shooting with around, I'd say 1 is to 80, F, F8, and ISO around 200. So we'll see what we get. Cathedral Cave and we finally arrived at Buwinda Gorge which was sort of our final destination after we hit our campsite so we've had a little bit of lunch but we misjudged the time during the day and it turns out what we thought was all probably about two in the afternoon we actually got there about four in the afternoon so now we're sort of scrambling and rushing to find a spot to actually take our sunset photos Julian's gone ahead up the gorge but personally I don't think he's gonna find any good photos it looks like at this point all the light has actually left the gorge, so I think the best that we can hope for is maybe some abstracts, maybe some telephoto shots, but I don't think that they're going to be very good without any nice light coming in through the gorge. But nevertheless, we'll go further up the gorge and hopefully we find something, but I've got a feeling we won't. To be honest, I think before the sun goes down I'm actually going to go back to the campsite and 
either go for a swim or take some photos of the cliff faces there because they are in some fantastic light right now and that water is mighty tempting after a day of hiking because <laughs> it's been a really long day. I think we've been, I think we were hiking for about six hours. So hopefully we find something. So I found Julian and he might have actually proved me wrong. I think there might actually be some compositions. Ah, there might be some compositions to be found in here. <laughs> so I pretty much set up as the same thing as he just shot, which is looking back through the gorge this way and just framing this up in a vertical orientation and just having the le leading line of those rock pebbles taking you through the curves of this canyon. I think it could be a very nice shot. So I'll show see if I can show you what I have up on the back of my camera at the moment. So you have the pebbles leading you into the shot, and you have the canyon sort of guiding you through the curving shape of them. I think it could work out quite nicely as a composition. I'm going to be shooting this one at 3.2 seconds at f8 and ISO 400. further down the canyon and I've framed up another composition pretty much the same sort of concept as the last one I want to use the rocks as a leading line into the canyon and then those curved canyon walls sort of as a as a continuation of the as a continuation of the leading line thank you Julian but also Julian just got the bright idea of deciding he's going to try and fly his drone through this canyon so I personally think that the drone is going to get absolutely destroyed when it hits the side of those canyon walls because it's obviously going to lose connection. But if it succeeds, it'll be a really cool shot. So I'm going to steal this footage and whatever happens with that drone, you're going to see that come up in a few seconds. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to take a peek at this composition and give it a snap and hopefully it should look pretty good. So I'll just spin you around and show you what I've got on frame at the moment. Oh, there's the sound of the drone. Jeez. Alrighty. And what I've got here is just the leading line of the pebbles again through the frame. And I have a nice little tree just up in the top corner. I think that's going to balance out that dark area quite nicely with the composition. And I also just have the curve of this line passing through the frame. I think this creates like a really balanced form, especially with the light coming through at the top of the composition. I think it'll look quite nice. Oh, there Julian goes. <laughs> oh, he's about to destroy his drone. No. So, I'll, I'll put up both the photo I just took and whatever happens to that drone. Good luck, Julian.
so Julian just flew his drone down the canyon, and as he was doing it, the thought that it was a bad idea started to go away in my mind, and I thought, wow, I really want to do that. So I also flew my drone down the canyon, so that's the footage that you'll actually be seeing. Or maybe I'll include his footage as well. I guess it depends whose footage is better. But moved a bit further down the canyon, ditched the bag, and I found another composition. Luckily this time of the year when we're coming into Carnivan, the wildflowers are actually in bloom at the moment. So I found a composition where I can use them as foreground interest as well as the leading line of the pebbles moving up the gorge and the walls driving you into that center of it. And on top of that, there's also a tree hanging from a cliff at the top of the composition. So this is what I'm working with right here, where I have the camera right here. I have these fantastic wildflowers all up here. The leading path of the pebbles moving you through the gorge, the walls all along the sides, and to top it all off, a hanging tree. And I managed to compose it in a way where I don't have any of this sky in the scene. Now it will have to be a focus stack because it's a wide angle shot, but I think it'll actually turn out quite nice with that lovely reflected light behind the tree sort of silhouetting it. So I'll show you what it looks like on the back of the camera. Just got to set up for the focus stack so it's not completely in focus. But I have this all composed in the front with the leading line passing through just by the middle. And I have that same tree right up here in the composition. So we'll snap that shot now. It's going to be a 10 second exposure because it's pretty dark in here. And I'll throw up what I have. just moving up the gorge and just trying to find compositions as we go up. I'd say I've moved up the gorge maybe about 20 meters or so. This place is just full of opportunities for photos, especially when you have a wide angle lens. So me and Julian are going sort of crazy <laughs> with finding shots. So same sort of concept as pretty much all the other photos I've taken in here. I've been trying to use the pebbles as leading lines up the oh, mosquito, just up the composition. So I'll show you what I have framed up here. It's pretty similar to all the others that I've done, but I still like it as a composition. So this is what we have framed up here. I'm going to have to shoot it as a focus stack probably, just to get this first rock here in focus, as well as the rest of the composition. But I think it's a nice grounding element, especially in the foreground, to give some depth to the image. I mean, it's not the best foreground you could find. I, th I think the wildflowers are a bit better, but fortunately we can't have wildflowers everywhere. But I think this is quite a nice shot, especially because you have this big, dramatic curve in the gorge right here, leading you right into the composition. And I might just snap the shot now because I'm getting eaten to death by mosquitoes right now. But we're shooting a 6 seconds, F13, ISO 250. Alright, so we've reached the end of the gorge, right there. And who had the great idea to fly the drone? Ah, uh, you did. You had the great idea. And then I copied you. I'll, I'll admit that, I did copy you. And because you have a better drone, you thought it would be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, really, I'm the one with the good footage here. But we're I'm framing up idea. probably our last composition of the gorge. And Julian's about to take off his drone, so maybe it'll be some more cool drone footage to put after this. But we're just looking back in the direction that we came. And same as all the other shots, we're using the pebbles as a leading line up into the composition and we're just using the gorge to sort of guide you through the shot and then we also have this nice greenery in the canopy sort of poking through so this is what we have framed up on the back of our camera just another vertical composition well, there goes the drone <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me, just another vertical composition. And don't need to focus stack this one or anything, you can just go ahead and straight take the shot. Same settings as before, ISO 250, F13, 6 second exposure. And let's go.
And who had the great idea to fly the drone? Ah, uh, you did. You had the great idea. So this is just a few seconds later after I took that shot and Julian so rudely interrupted me with taking off his drone. So he went down the corner of the canyon and all of a sudden I hear a big crashing sound. And then suddenly the drone just stops. So now we're walking back down the canyon and Julian's about to find out what the fate of his drone is going to be. So I'll keep you guys updated and we can see just how bad his drone's been destroyed. Oh, there's light. When there's light, there's light. <laughs> no. Look at the drone. Let's do a survey of the damage. What are we looking at here? What are we looking at? Oh, oh, that's not looking good. That's all right. Ah, oh. just need to change one. With that small miracle of Julian's drone surviving, that brings our third day in Carnarvon Gorge to an end. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video because this is where it starts getting real interesting on the trip. And we get hit with some crazy weather and we have to adjust our plans. So make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and stay tuned. And I'll leave you guys with another long drone clip of me flying through the canyon and not crashing my drone. Thanks for watching.